I'm Eric Rock, and this is Worship Song Lyric Analysis, the show where we analyze worship songs, both old and new, and try and figure out, A, if there's any doubt or confusion at all, what do the words in the song mean, and much more importantly, B, are those words biblical? And today, we're looking at a newer song, Fresh Wind by Hillsong. Fresh Wind comes from Hillsong's album, These Same Skies. The songwriters have shared in interviews that although the idea for the song first came about in 2019, it was mostly shaped by the coronavirus pandemic of 2020. Thinking about how that was spread through the air, but then tying that idea of air to the rushing wind described in the passage in Acts describing God's spirit coming on believers at Pentecost and longing for that to happen again. Now, longing for God to move in response to evils and sins in this world is a good and biblical idea, but how biblical is the song itself? Well, let's look at the word of God and jump right on in. The song starts off in verse 1. Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire of God, fall within, Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. And the basic idea for this is from Acts 2, where Jesus had just died and rose again and then ascended up into heaven and the followers of Jesus at the time weren't quite sure what to do and so they were all gathered together in the upper room waiting for something to happen and there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind and the Holy Spirit fell on the followers of Jesus and this is important and actually kind of crazy at the time because the Holy Spirit of God had never come to permanently indwell followers of Christ. It had come upon certain people for certain times in order to do certain things, but it had never come to permanently indwell believers. And this was such a new and crazy thing that there was a symbol with the tongues of fire on top of their heads. So that's why the song talks about rushing wind and God's fire falling. Now, yes, this is biblical then in the sense of it is describing something that actually did happen. This actually did happen in the book of Acts. Now, if I could give a little commentary on this, I, I do think that in this song, it's a faulty application, which is indicative of Hillsong itself's bad theology surrounding um, the Holy Spirit, because uh, I believe that Acts is mostly descriptive, describing what happened, and the rushing wind sound and the tongues of fire above their heads, th that's not something that always happens when believers get the Holy Spirit. In fact, that, that really only happened this one time, and it was just a symbol to show that, hey, this is something brand new and different, the Holy Spirit falling down, because it, again, it hadn't indwelt believers permanently. This was a new thing, but, but now it's not a new thing, and so we don't need that symbol of the rushing wind and fire every single time that a believer receives the Holy Spirit. But more on that in a second when we get to the chorus. The verse continues, as we repent, turn from sin, revival embers smoldering, breath of God fan us into flame. And hey, I have to give this song its props. It talks about repentance. Hey, not very many songs, especially not many songs by Hillsong, actually speak frankly about repentance, which is a very important part of the Christian message. Repenting is turning from sin, as they describe. God hates sin, and we are sinful people. Sin just being any bad thing that we've done. We need to humble ourselves, come before God, and say, I have committed sin that you hate. I am not going to do those sins anymore. And not that we need to be perfect as Christians, obviously. We are going to try our very best to not sin and to follow Christ. We'll fail, but God forgives, and that's awesome. But repentance is turning from 
sin. And I think that's something that in Christian music today, it's not talked about enough. It's that idea of repentance. It's mostly focused on how good we are in Christ, which is awesome. And we are clothed in Christ's righteousness, but we are still sinners saved by grace. And, and turning from that sin is important, making that conscious effort. So props to the song there for talking about repentance. All right, and finally the chorus, which continues the idea started in the verse about the wind. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. And again, this is based on a descriptive passage in the Bible. So, so yes, technically it's biblical in the sense of it's describing something that happened but it's also truly not in the sense of it's taking something descriptive and making it prescriptive. It's saying that something that happened should happen again. And so saying, hey, we need a wind again, like we need God's special wind to show that he's moving and working. No, no, that's not true. And the, the problem is, especially when saying, pour your spirit out, okay, that's actually kind of a, a theological issue because yes, again, in the past, God poured his spirit out on believers in specific times and specific ways, but as of right now in the age that we live in, God's spirit indwells believers right when they come to Christ, and, and that's all the Holy Spirit that they need. All right, consider this passage in Titus. Let me read it to you real quick. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, did you catch that for a second? He poured out his spirit past tense. While Acts is usually descriptive describing things, the epistles, which are just the letters written by mostly Paul and uh, some of the other apostles, are mostly prescriptive. It's passage by passage, that's not a, a blanket statement. But in something like this, Paul is telling Titus about how to run a church, and he's talking about, hey, we were already filled with the Holy Spirit. God already poured out his spirit past tense. He doesn't say, and God is continuing to pour out his spirit. No, he's saying that this happened. Just like we were justified once and for all past tense. It's not like we need to keep constantly being justified again and again. We are in right standing. And so in the same way, we do not need the Holy Spirit poured out constantly again and again. We already have the Holy Spirit indwelling us as believers. So it's not about, oh, we need more of the Holy Spirit. No, what we need as believers is to live in the Spirit and keep in step with the Spirit, which is just a way of saying live with the Spirit, constantly be, you know, on the same page. And how do we do that? You know, through prayer through reading the word of God and, you know, trying to live as God would want us to. And again, are we perfect? No, but the Holy Spirit living in us is actually our helper in this. And he is a helper for day to day living. You know, you don't need mountaintop experiences every time in order to become closer to God. You just need daily walking with God. And I think that's where bands and churches like Hillsong and Bethel and Elevation Worship and um, all of those to an extent kind of have a faulty theology of the Spirit where it's more focused on those mountaintop crazy spiritual experiences and not so much on day-to-day -day, almost mundane Christian living where you're just walking in step with the Spirit and drawing closer to God. So when it says that 
oh, the, the only way to fix this is with a fresh wind where God pours his spirit out. No, that's just not true. You know, we already have God's spirit. We can already walk in God's spirit. And thinking that a supernatural move of God is the only way for things to get better discounts what's already at work in your life. God's spirit is already at work in your life through the mundane, through the evil, and longing, longing for God to work and move and to eradicate evil and do great works. That is not a bad thing at all. All. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't long for that. I'm just saying that we need to focus on what God is doing and how God is working and not always long for those mountaintop experiences. If we get them, that's awesome. Praise the Lord. Sometimes that is exactly what we need, but not always. And so that would be what I pray that you would understand about this course and about this song as a whole and how it reflects Hillsong's theology in a way that's not quite biblical. It has a good biblical basis, but it neglects that day-to-day -day walking with God. All right, the song continues with another verse. For hearts that burn with holy fear, purified in faith and deed, refiner's fire, strengthen what remains. And yes, okay, so the refiner's fire is how God makes us more like himself. We are tested through fire to the praise of God. And this is actually rather important too. The fire that the Bible talks about whenever it talks about a refiner's fire uh, is trials and tribulations, right? Sometimes um, churches have a faulty theology where they try to tie the refiner's fire to the fire that fell at Pentecost, but no, those are two different things. The fire at Pentecost was a physical symbol of the Holy Spirit coming down for the first time. The refiner's fire are trials and tribulations. This is best shown in James, right? Count it all joy when you encounter various trials, you know, because trials eventually strengthen your faith. And so that's what the refiner's fire is in scripture, the biblical idea of it. You know, sometimes again, bands have kind of unbiblical ideas about fire and what it means. I think this song is kind of all right because it just talks about the refiner's fire. It doesn't try and tie refiner's fire to um, zeal or passion or anything, but uh, something to think about when listening to worship songs for sure. So we the church who bear your light, lamp of flame, city bright. King and kingdom come is what we pray. And yes, this is good and true. According to Jesus himself, we, i.e. Christians, followers of Christ, who proclaim him are a city on a hill. We are giving light, the light of the hope of Jesus Christ, to a dark world, a world without hope. And yes, that should be something that we strive to do, is be that city on a hill that shows the hope of Jesus Christ to a dead, dying world. So yeah, I think that uh, this verse is actually pretty good. All right, for the next chorus, they add a second part. We have the fresh wind, spirit of heaven, but then we have a holy anointing, a power of your presence, pour your spirit out. And here's the deal, God's presence is truly everywhere. What they're thinking about is the Shekinah glory. Shekinah just means like the physical glowing presence of God that people usually think about with the presence of God. So really they're, they're saying it in a different way in the second part. They're still basically saying we need a supernatural mountaintop moment in order to, you know, see some change around here. We need to be anointed. We need God's physical presence to fall down because apparently the, the current presence of God just isn't enough. We need to worship to help that out. So yeah, it's just basically kind of saying the same thing over again. So I'm not going to dwell on this too much because it's the same idea that I kind of covered in the, my first part of the course. However, then we get to the bridge and this is where it totally goes off the rails. Let all the redeemed prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. Move upon our praise, sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. 
And yeah, so the move upon our praise, we can hear the wind blowing. Uh, that's more imagery of tying the, the rushing wind and axe to God's spirit moving and like God breathing on us, which again, I kind of covered in the chorus. It, kind of a problem because it says we, that we need to have a special like mountaintop experience move from God rather than day-to-day -day stuff. But I would like to focus on the first line of the bridge because that's where the problem in the entire song lies. Let all the redeemed prophesy and sing. Oh boy. Um, there have been entire videos made just about uh, Hillsong and Bethel's and those kind of churches bad ideas about prophecy and what that means. First of all, regardless if whether you believe prophecy still exists today, you should not believe that every single believer has the gift of prophecy. It is a spiritual gift like anything else, and not everyone should do it. Not every believer should. And in fact, there are specific rules regarding prophecy and what that should look like. When a prophet speaks, talking about the future, we literally have a measuring stick. If it happens, then it's a true prophet, and if it doesn't happen, then it's not a true prophet. You, you can't just spontaneously say anything you want to and call that prophecy. And again, there are several good resources that show uh, this kind of bad theology around prophecy where they literally will just say, say whatever you want to, say whatever you're thinking, and that is prophecy. And uh, friends, that is just not true and not what the Bible says. It, prophecy is speaking for God. If you are just saying your own words and claiming you're speaking for God, then you are claiming to be God, which is blasphemy. Friends, this is not something to mess around with. I would literally not recommend this song based on this one line because this is such a problem. We should not treat prophecy lightly. Prophecy was speaking God's words. And friends, where can we find God's words? In the Bible. So if you really want prophecy, friends, read the word of God. That's where God's words are, and that's where you can truly encounter God. So that would be my final charge to you, friends, is read the word. That is where you can find God and draw closer to him. It's not through, you know, some crazy mountaintop experience where fire falls down, there's a wind blowing, and you start prophesying as you sing. No, no, no. That is not how you draw closer to God in the modern age. It's through daily prayer, reading the word, and you know, knowing what God wants and following him. So that would be my prayer for you today, friends. All right, that was Fresh Wind by Hillsong. Is it biblical? Well, if you just watched any of the bridge section, you know the answer is no, right? The, the focus on prophecy and God pouring his spirit out again when the, when the word doesn't say that. Um, I would not recommend this song for any kind of corporate worship. Um, again, that's just my recommendation. I encourage you to read the scriptures, find out between you and God what you think about it. But I hope this was helpful and gave you a little bit more context on the song and what potential problems with it are. But until next time, friends, I pray that you would daily walk in step with the Spirit as you read the word and draw closer to Christ. Until next time, friends, peace.